the failure of smaller family firms to find ways to meaningfully integrate strained capital, increased borrowing, and stretch the available skilled managerial and labor pool beyond acceptable limits. Grace Kennedy continued investment in technology in order to become more efficient and productive and upgraded many product offerings to meet international standards. Quality became a way of life and international access requirements and safety standards were rigidly adhered to. This was supported by even greater export efforts as foreign exchange earnings became a necessity for growth. The decision to join forces with Western Union proved to be a masterstroke and improved the foreign exchange situation of the company and the country dramatically. It was a bold step as it took the company out of its safety zone into a previously unknown world of rapidly changing technology and wider financial operations. The company was indeed taking Jamaica to the world. Patrick Bryan again remarks, globalization has always been a companion of production specialization from the sugar plantations of the past to the tourism enclaves of today. Since the late 15th century, the Caribbean has been integrated into the world economy through trade and investment. What is different today is the increased vulnerability of the Caribbean's political economy, those quotations. Three broad areas of development in Jamaica have guided the company's development of services and products, and these were all in almost timing with the country's stated goals. The company implemented and then perhaps learned from the early mistakes in each period and modified accordingly. Firstly, the development of a wider distribution while selling on branded bulk commodities and no refrigerated products. This was in the sugar and basic agriculture period. Secondly, the growth in prepackaged branded goods as retail and more modern wholesalers spread in rural areas during township growth in the bauxite expansion. In this stage, local manufacturing started along with the origins of Jamaican brands. Thirdly, branded goods expanded dramatically as did new packaging in order to serve the growing tourism industry. This facilitated a core of Grace brands to go to export markets. This in turn forced the need for higher volumes, fewer products on a line, and expansion to controlled quality contract packing. The company saw the value of owning overseas distribution and invested in Toronto and later in London. Regrettably, the country saw the folding of many manufacturers who could not or would not make necessary changes. Trinidad started to make major improvements in machinery, efficiencies, and cheap power. The face of Caribbean trade was turning to Trinidad, and in many ways, Jamaica blinked. It is useful to say that many of these conditions had presented themselves in different ways, and Grace Kennedy learned how to cope and act quickly through retained corporate memories. The country has not. We come to some crossroads here again invoke self-determination or cling to dependence, pursue private initiative or demand public underwriting, prioritize human capital development or condemn labor to low skill tasks, engage the small man or indulge the privileged. It's getting monotonous. <laughs> Grasp opportunities quickly and decisively or react sluggishly and half-heartedly to crises. Diversify into new positions or overinvest in old positions. Use geography strategically or disregard geography. It goes on, it keeps repeating itself. 
right through the decades. And there are a few more that come require new, require accurate information or be guided by sentiment. Defend integrity or bow to corruption. Vigilantly protect long-term interests or always gratify short-term wants. It is fair to say that the country has not performed as well as the company. And the book sets this out right at the front in a diagram. But even though the latter has taken the obvious paths that were good for the country, I must admit that I was despondent as I neared the end of the comparisons and I wondered how I would derive anything positive from the many sleepless nights. The country in my analogy is destined from Kingston to Port Antonio via Ocheras. But every time we reach Yorton, we turn left through Worthy Park, Crofts Hill, Kellix, Maypen, and back to Kingston. We wait a few years, or change a few governments, or join new groupings, and we set off again for Port Antonio. But when we reach Yorton, we turn left. <laughs> this sorry and repetitive route was really making me sad and disillusioned and doubting if we, the country, could ever get anywhere near our destination. I wondered what kind of message I would be sending in this state of pessimism. Then one night as I reread the manuscript, it occurred to me that there was no physical roadblock at Uaton. There was nothing physical, no colonial manipulation, no IMF, no World Bank, no invading armies to change the course of a nation. The problem was with our own mindset that was conditioned not to accept change and actually vigorously rejects change. What a relief that proved to be, as I can now accept that minds can be changed to do what is right for the country. Repeating a journey identically and expecting different results is not a sane action. We only need to recognize the options and take the road that leads towards prosperity. Permit me in closing to be a little more optimistic and personal. The Jamaican dream is still alive. It is not easy to believe that the grandson of a bookkeeper and shoemaker of Brownstown with 11 children and the son of a man who left school at 13 to help support his family is standing here before you this afternoon. That is a Jamaican dream that has driven our family since my grandfather's birth around 1864. It is to me a source of pride and an encouragement to do better. The love of country exhibited by Grace Kennedy, and I quote, to take what is good for Jamaica and make it good for Grace Kennedy is still a relevant belief that has made the company take a path that in an unerring way has guided the company to success for 90 years. If the Jamaican dream lives on, and those of us young and old retain that ambition, there is no longer a need for the country to choose the easy but wrong paths. We should endeavor to build a country that will do even better than Grace Kennedy has done by simply doing what is right for Jamaica. Thank you.